Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Coffee Talk with Comet Friday morning to you. I hope you're doing well today. Looking forward to getting started with you this morning. It is, uh, it's sort of blustery out today, wouldn't you say? It's kind of nasty out there. Anyhow, listen, I'm excited to be here with you. I, I hope you're having a good start to your Friday morning, and uh, we certainly are. For those of you tuning in early, I want to share with you, we've got a special guest today. It's my buddy. Whoop. Let's see if I can get this right. Where is he? Ozzy. Ozzy, look. Look, buddy. Look. Oh, man. Ozzy. Oh, you're famous, buddy. You're famous. How about it? Huh? All right. So, Ozzy uh, is the most requested guest that we actually have on Coffee Talk. He, uh, he's making an appearance today. He's in here on a rainy day with us today. Well, I don't look forward to getting him outside in the rain as much uh, because he certainly soaks it up. It's good to have him here in the office with us. So good morning. Good morning, Miranda. Yep. You need to come by today and see the big guy. Uh, Anyhow, I hope everybody's doing really well. Eileen, good to see you. I'd rather have this rain than the snow from where you and I come from, Eileen. And I've got a really interesting statistic, um, top 10 list that you're going to be interested in here in just a little bit. Christine, uh, Christina, good morning to you. Uh, So listen, really excited. Got a few things to talk about today. Uh, you know, I always, uh, I always go down the road of what's going on in, uh, in my life, my personal life, a little bit. Um, but we've got a lot of real estate things to talk about today. We're going we're to try to keep this fairly short. And, you know, for me, that means about an hour and a half. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, so a couple of things. Number one, um, baseball. So it was supposed to have started two weeks ago. We were supposed to have played in a couple of preseason tournaments. This is our seventh straight day of rain. Seven straight days of rain, guys. Think about that for just a second. Um, that means baseball isn't happening anytime soon. I am proud to tell you, Camden, who's never played any other sport, um, at least not competitively, tried out for the first time and made his AAU basketball team as an 11-year-old. So uh, really excited about that for him. Now, Camden, um, typically we wouldn't let him play two sports at the same time, but the kid's got like a 96 average at school. He does exactly what we ask him to do all the time, before we even ask him in some cases. And so if there's a kid that's earned it, we're going to give him a shot to show us that he can certainly handle, um, you know, multitasking and, uh, uh, what is it, time management. So, anyhow, for what it's worth, really excited about that. Um, I'm curious, what do you think about this new new football league? So I, I love watching football. You guys know Todd Martinelli. Oh, my goodness, there's a name from the past. Those of you that know me know that I love, love, love watching my Oakland Raiders. And I don't need to hear any jokes, all you New Englanders that are on here. I don't need to hear anything about that. But with the new Alliance of American Football, I could typically care less about any other football league. But my two boys are choosing teams. And they're excited about this really short season. And I asked them, I said, why are you pumped about this? And it was interesting what they said. They said, well, this is our generation, Dad. This is something that's starting while we're kids. and something that we can get into from the very beginning. And so it's interesting because my, my younger son, I think, Camden, is choosing the Orlando Apollos to cheer for. Uh, Cole has chosen the team, uh, goodness, I want maybe the Memphis Express. I can't remember which one. So I'm on the hunt for a team. I love the name, the Birmingham Iron. So I might cheer for the Birmingham Iron just so we can have some good, uh, uh, honest fun in the house with it. So I'm curious, if, if they had football year-round, would you watch it year-round? Um, all right. I saw something yesterday. Samsung came out with a new phone, and it's a foldable phone, which I, I'm not quite sure I get that just yet. I am as tied into Apple as anybody can be. I, I have Apple and I, and you name it, that's all I use. Is a foldable phone a strong enough um, pull for you to leave the, uh, the Apple family and go to Samsung? For those of you that have left Apple and gone to Samsung, talk to me about that. Is that something that you... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, is that some? Is it was it a good decision? Is that something that that you uh, feel was was right for you? Uh, now that you've made that change, are you coming back to Apple? Which is better? What phone do you carry and why? Dana, I'm with you. Uh, tried and true. Um, oh, Miranda, <laughs> I hear you, Miranda. But listen, we're, we're seriously, it, it's a two thousand dollar phone and it folds. I don't know that I need my phone to fold personally, but. Who knows? So I'm curious, what phone do you carry? What phone do you want to carry? And if you've made the change, are you coming back home again? Um, let me know. I, I'd be real curious about that. Then I want everybody real quick, everybody everybody, right now, take your coffee cup. And for those of you that are drinking other things like Mountain Dews in the morning, Brian Pate, raise your cup up high right now with me. 
Cheers to those Tar Heels. How about those Tar Heels, huh? Man, yeah, you can you can hear the crowd in the background. Seriously, what a great game. I don't want to hear about Zion this and Zion that. Three or four McDonald's All-Americans remained on the court for Duke. Does Zion impact the game? No doubt about it. They still had more McDonald's All-Americans on the court. It, some of you are going to be upset about me using that argument. I know exactly who you are. But it's the same argument that you've used when your team's lost to the Heels for years. The Heels get all these uh, McDonald's All-Americans. So, anyhow, um, no folding phones, Dan. I'm with you. Anthony, good morning, my friend. Hey, I'm dying to get down there and have pizza with you. I, I've got a, 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 got to make that trip down there sometime. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Anthony Malafronte, if you need an agent in the Tampa area, is a good friend, a really, really good real estate agent, and he's got a pizza oven in his backyard. How cool is that? Um, anyhow, so I'm curious to know about the phone. I also am so proud of my Tar Heels, and I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about real estate. I promised you today that we'd try to keep it short. And, and we'll do that. I'll make sure Ozzy makes another appearance here uh, before we get off the phone or before we get off the uh, the show here. So last year, 2018, home values uh, increased nationally at 5.1%. Okay, you can see we've kind of gotten serious here all of a sudden, right? 5.1% um, home values in 2018. Um, there's a lot of different opinions about what 2019 is going to hold. And nobody has a crystal ball, but we always have to look at the indicators, right? Right now, we're hearing a lot of people complaining about or concerned, not complaining, concerned about a shift in the market. And is there a shift happening? And how big is that shift? Is it going to be an adjustment like we saw back in 2008, 9, 10, and 11? Right? Those are the things people are concerned about. And so um, there's, I read a report recently that talked about the three indicators that, they're being, that are being tracked to find out how close are we to, to Armageddon again, like we were in the real estate industry you know, a decade ago. Uh, interesting, they came up with three reasons that we're not heading into this crash, to use the word everybody used. Um, number one, a decade ago, homes were depreciating drastically, right? They lost 29% of their value over a four-year period of time. Between 2008 and 2011, homes were losing almost a third of their value. Right now, guys, we are certainly seeing appreciation still. Granted, granted, we're not seeing 6 to 7% in 2019 like we've seen over the last two to three years. 94% of experts are indicating that they, they still expect us to see appreciation in the 3 to 4% range. However, the other 6% still feel that we're either going to be flat or in that 1% appreciation range. So nowhere near the indicators that we had heading into the last uh, recession. Mortgage standards. This is a fun one for me. David Colgan, I hope you're tuning in, and you're certainly welcome to, to give us a good response here regarding mortgage standards, guys. So Mortgage standards back, for those of you that weren't in the business or don't remember, um, you could walk in, as long as you were breathing, you could sign a mortgage paper. You, you could sign the documents to buy a house. If you were breathing and said you had a good job and you, you, your car was clean when you got into the driveway, those lenders were signing documents with you. It was predatory. It, not everybody was doing it. My, my David might have been, but not everybody else. Um, but seriously, it, it, was, it was a time in our, in our um, history where we were doing doing wrong by the buyers, right? We're telling buyers they could afford more than they could afford, and it helped get us into that position. It wasn't the only reason, but it certainly was a reason. Uh, today, guys, it's, we're not even close to that today. Uh, it, you still have to almost give blood in order to get a mortgage today in most cases. Have they lightened up a little bit in the last couple of years? Absolutely, they have. Um, and then the third and final indicator, the foreclosure inventory. Over the last decade, foreclosures made up 35% of all, all home sales, 35% of all home sales uh, in the past decade. Um, in the fourth quarter, we had the lowest fourth quarter of foreclosure listings that we've had since the, the third quarter of 2006. We're nowhere near, guys, we're, not, we're nowhere near the uh, early indicators that led us into that 2008 to 2012 uh, recession. So I thought there was some, some good news there. I, I, hopefully we've uh, allayed some fears. Uh, about the market. I wanted to talk about something more fun. I'm curious, and I'd love for all of you to join in with me here, if you don't mind. There's a top 10 list for both the percentage of uh, states that are, excuse me, the percentage of people moving into states, not the number of people, but percentage of growth. I'm curious to know the top 10 states that saw the highest percentage of growth over the past year, what states do you think they were? Go ahead, give, give me a couple of names. I'm going to give you one right now, just so you know. North Carolina is in there, it's number eight. But give me another state, and Anthony, I'm sorry to tell you, Florida isn't one of them in terms of percentage of growth. Anybody? 
Eileen, yeah. Now you're right. I agree with you. Pizza and beers. I'm with you, Anthony. Anybody? Come on. Somebody's got to have a guess. Give me one. Give me one state. Somebody join in with me here. And I'll just sit here and drink my coffee with you. Trey McDonald. Thank you. Number six, South Carolina. Yeah, you're exactly right. Number one state percentage of growth. Tennessee, I would have thought the same thing. Number one state percentage of growth, guys? Vermont. Yes, Miranda. Vermont. Number two, Oregon. What do Vermont and Oregon have in common? Lots of trees, very little regulation, um, lots of, I hate to say it, lots of weed. Um, there's a lot of similarities between those two states, number one, number two. Number three, Idaho. Number four, Nevada. Number five, Arizona. Six, South Carolina. Seven, Washington. Now, I hear you, Miranda. I know those hearts are from you. Um, number nine, South Dakota. Number 10, Washington, D.C. And, of course, North Carolina bringing home everything here at number eight. What's impressive to me about South Carolina and North Carolina is you know the number of people moving here is, is really, really high. To have the percentage of growth be on that chart is really, really impressive because that's, that's growth over growth. And so for those people that weren't on earlier with me, there's my buddy. There's my buddy. What's up, bud? What's up? We're going to get a cookie? We, when we're done, we'll get a cookie, okay? All right, buddy. Uh, anyhow, so let's talk about the 10 states that didn't make the list, the 10 states that they're moving out from. One guess for number one, and I know I'm going to offend some people here, but one guess for number one. Somebody give me a guess on number one. Damn it, Texas, that was, a, that was a good guess for, for top 10. Didn't make the list, but I bet they're close. Somebody give me a guess. What state are people moving out of? And don't say Massachusetts because I'm from Massachusetts originally. Oh, I hear you. Give Ozzy one now. I hear you. All right, since so nobody's guessing, I'm just going to go ahead and get out. Yes, who said Jersey? Anthony, yeah, and you know a little something about that part of this country. Jersey's number one. Illinois, number two. I want you to think about the theme between these 10 states. Jersey, Illinois, Connecticut, New York, Kansas, Ohio, Massachusetts, Iowa, Montana, and Michigan. Those are your top 10 states percentage of people moving out of. Uh, I find that an interesting list. Uh, a, they're all above the Mason-Dixon line, yet the number one state people are moving to percentage-wise is above the Mason-Dixon line, actually further north than just about any one of those states. Um, so I, it's not all weather related because if they're moving to Washington and Oregon and Idaho and uh, Vermont, then it's not all weather related like we all like to think. But I thought those were interesting, uh, interesting stats. So listen, a couple of things before I let you go. Uh, number one, again, raising my cup to my tower heels. I'm so, so excited. What a great week this is. For those of you that I'm driving crazy by mentioning it, God bless you. God bless you. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, number two. Um, we are hiring. We are hiring both on the commercial and the residential team, and we need brokers. We've got leads, systems, support, inventory. What we need are good quality people that want to come join a really fun team. You get a chance to hang out with my buddy Ozzy here. So anyhow, I hope you all have a great week. I'll see you next week. And I know I promised everybody some one-on-one -on -one time with Chad Wingler on here. Um, we've been unable to make that happen. Chad has been really, really busy. He has, for those of you that care, as a buyer specialist on our team, as our lead buyer specialist, he has 10 clients under contract right now, uh, two more flying in this weekend. He is doing a great job. If you're looking to buy a home right now, Chad and Martin are ready, and, and they're able and eager to help you. They do, the reason people keep coming back to these guys is because they do such a good job. Uh, love you guys. I'll see you next week.